Roughly a thousand Filipino crew work on the Saga vessels, and many of them were at sea when the typhoon struck. Communications with the Philippines were patchy at best, and the majority of the crew had no way of knowing what was going on back home. My first time when I heard the news uh, a day before and the type, super type is coming in the Philippines. I was just so worried at that time. And I, last time I spoke to my, to my wife and I tell her, just get communication to answer to my parents what happened in there. And then on the time, I tried to contact my parents on the midnight. I, can't, I cannot contact anyone with them. The, the strong type was really severe hit and direct hit in my place hometown. Very direct. And then my the next day when I tried to call my wife, she said there's not there's no communication, nothing is not accessible, no we don't know what happened in there anymore. So I'm so worried at that time, very, very worried. And I dream I dream my mom and she's crying. And I said there's something wrong in there. There's Spirit, something wrong in there. You need to go there immediately on the time. And then when they got there, and she's crying, she said, they're gone, she said. Last year is the most unlucky year for us because uh, we have 25 uh, storm in a year. Normally three, four storms in a year is normal because we have rainy season but that year, last year, the 23rd storm is the hurricane and that was the biggest in history. We never have that experience. That is the biggest tragedy that uh, we have in the Philippines. The time is uh, happening because I am, I am I am on board here, then after three days, I just try to call my wife and nobody, I cannot contact. Then I was, uh, I was, uh, I was talking to my housekeeper to going home early. It was an anxious time for everyone. Ronald, Norman and others affected by the disaster were flown back to the Philippines' care of Saga to find their families and assess the damage. We knew if they were going to go home and find out bad news. We knew they, they needed money there and then. Cash to buy things, if they found their family, to physically set them up somewhere. And uh, the captain at the time was particularly brilliant in, in assuring that they left because in a disaster such as that you can go there and seek aid and help but they physically had money in their hand once they got home and we flew them home they could immediately do some good and help so they physically had cash as well as us paying into the central fund to help tackle ban as a whole my, my wife she said very terrible you know because uh, but uh, very strong typhoon and I talked to my wife that thank God you are alive also my mother my sister nobody died also the house of my mother is totally wiped out was out and at that time visa I'm so sad because my mother's house is nothing he was uh, live in the tent only once they knew that their families were, were okay, for their colleagues who knew that their families were not okay, the devastation was greater. They contacted the, their families at home and said, how desperate is the situation? Oh, well, we're okay, but we're safe. And they gave up their wage to send to those that were affected more so. I mean, it, it was quite incredible. The day it happened, our customers made it abundantly clear to us as a company that they wanted to rally round and support our crew members and they expected the company to do likewise. So I was absolutely delighted when the Saga Charitable Trust said, if the passengers raised £75,000, then the company and the Saga Charitable Trust would match it, making a pot of £150,000. And that's precisely what happened in double quick time. 
and that money is now being spent very efficiently with no administrative costs, all the money going directly to local communities to help people rebuild their houses and homes. Elva Esquivel, fleet director of the Manning Agency in Manila, went to meet the brother of Irwin, another of the crewmen affected. This is the house they and the Irwin and this is the family that is not in Cebu. You can see that it's really hard to get all of them. Can you explain to them? This is our house. Actually, this is our house. This is our house. This is our house. This is our house. Aligi na lang yan eh. Yan yung bahay namin. Yan yung tinitira namin. Ito dito, tindahan to. So to, ito talaga totally sira, no? Totally talaga. Kasi yung, yung kalahati ng bahay, na, kalahati ng tindahan, pumunta sa gitna ng kalsada. Ito, ito banyo to, diba? Banyo, o, banyo. Banyo, banyo din yun. Banyo yun lang dito na bahay. Ito, banyo to sa tindahan. Pero at dito hindi bumaha. Ah, hindi. Hindi naman malakas yung ulan eh. Ang malakas yung hangin. Hangin talaga ang sumira ng bahay namin. <laughs> hindi? So ayan, nasira talaga lahat siya. Pero saan na nga, ano, for by, uh, nakaimi na by next week siguro, darating na. Elva left Irwin and traveled to meet the family of crewman Eduardo. Ayan, sipag niyo ha. Elva's last stop was to visit Norman's family to see the reconstruction work in progress. Um, ito yung house nila Norman kaharop. Uh, the first time that we went here, wala talaga to bumagsak siya lahat. Ano di ba nai bumagsak siya lahat? Uh, as you can see, di ba malapit siya sa dagat? Ignan yong. Pero ngayon, at least medyo nagawa na yung bahay nila. No? So. Ito yung mami ni Norman Kaharo. So, nung last time na nagpunta kami, di ba na yun, no? Doon pa kayo ngayon, medyo pwede na dito. Pwede na, oo. Malakas agad yung ulan. Makagabi, malakas ang ulan. Matubig doon, kaya kung ako dito, oo, dito na lang. So, dahan-dahan. Dahan-dahan. Pero si nanay, nakangiti pa. Siyempre, wala naman talaga tayong magagawa doon. Kaya, gusto namin kasi makapunta na dito kasi itong unahin namin gusto nang punta. Ay, umiiyak ka na naman. Huwag ka lang umiiyak, ikaw naman. Huwag ka lang umiiyak. Ah, no. Pero, ang importante, ano, walang, walang, Wala, oo, okay na ba? Kasi ang, ang material na bagay ay babalik. Oo, may babalik pa rin. Pero yung buhay... Oo. So, medyo maayos na. Ito yung sinasabi namin namin. Nung malaki na yung tubig, nung 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 nung
Yeah, as of now, is he make to revert because my mother is a she was a he was she was staying there and he was he said he said to me that Norman, can you helping me to rebuild my house? Yes, mother, I I was talk to my company and the and the Magsaysay company and Saga company. The help from Saga, I was sending uh, help to my sister to start to build her own house because they cannot live it in the tent city forever. <laughs> also, also in the bank house. It's not possible there because they have kids, you know. So I try when I come back in December, try to send him a money to start a simple house that they can have a good shelter, you know, they have electricity and water. <laughs> There were some awfully tragic stories of, of crew members who lost loved ones. Um, mercifully, uh, not as many as we first feared may be the case. And there is no way that you can compensate those people in a financial sense for that loss. But the symbol of us running, rallying round and providing this support reflects an attitude, a belief that we are one society, we are one world, we are one community, and the bonds between Saga shipping, Saga cruising, and the Philippines are very strong indeed. In a troubled world, terrible events sometimes remind us of our shared humanity. The Saga Charitable Trust is proud to have been a part of the response to the Taklaban disaster and would like to thank the passengers, officers and crew who contributed so generously to the relief fund. We would like to give our sincere appreciation to all the guests, passengers, who helped Saga to support all the Filipino workers that have been affected on board Saga fleet because of this hurricane. We would like to say thank you. Thank you very much.